tank is an armored fighting vehicle designed for frontline combat, with heavy firepower, strong armor, tracks and a powerful engine providing good battlefield maneuverability. The first tanks were designed to overcome the deadlock of trench warfare, in the 2010s, they are a mainstay of modern ground forces and a key part of combined arms combat. Modern tanks are versatile mobile land weapon system platforms, mounting a large caliber cannon in a rotating gun turret, supplemented by mounted machine guns or other weapons. They combine this with heavy vehicle armor which provides protection for the crew, the vehicle's weapons, and its propulsion systems, and operational mobility, due to its use of tracks rather than wheels, which allows the tank to move over rugged terrain and adverse conditions such as mud, and be positioned on the battlefield in advantageous locations. These features enable the tank to perform well in a variety of intense combat situations, simultaneously both offensively with fire from their powerful tank gun, and defensively due to their near invulnerability from common firearms and good resistance from heavier weapons, all while maintaining the mobility needed to exploit changing tactical situations. Fully integrating tanks into modern military forces spawned a new era of combat, armored warfare. The modern tank was the result of a century of development from the first primitive armored vehicles, due to improvements in technology such as the internal combustion engine, which allowed the rapid movement of heavy armored vehicles. As a result of these advances, tanks underwent tremendous shifts in capability in the years since their first appearance. Tanks in World War I were developed separately and simultaneously by Great Britain and France as a means to break the deadlock of trench warfare on the Western Front. The initial vehicle, nicknamed Little Willie, was constructed at William Foster & Co. in Lincoln, England in 1915, with leading roles played by Major Walter Gordon Wilson who designed the gearbox and hull, and by William Tritton of William Foster & Co., who designed the track plates. This was a prototype of a new design that would become the British Army's Mark I tank, the first tank used in combat in September 1916 during the Battle of the Somme. The name tank was adopted by the British during the early stages of their development, as a security measure to conceal their purpose, see etymology. While the British and French built thousands of tanks in World War I, Germany was unconvinced of the tank's potential, and built only 20. Tanks of the interwar period evolved into the much larger and more powerful designs of World War II. Important new concepts of armored warfare were developed, the Soviet Union launched the first mass tank-slash-air attack at Kalkin Gol, Nomonan, in August 1939, and later developed the T-34, one of the predecessors of the main battle tank. Less than two weeks later, Germany began their large-scale armored campaigns that would become known as Blitzkrieg, Lightning War, massed concentrations of tanks combined with motorized and mechanist infantry, artillery and air power designed to break through the enemy front and collapse enemy resistance. The widespread introduction of high-explosive anti-tank warheads during the second half of World War II led to lightweight infantry-carried anti-tank weapons such as the Panzerfaust, which could destroy some types of tanks. Tanks in the Cold War were designed with these weapons in mind, and led to greatly improved armor types during the 1960s, especially composite armor. Improved engines, transmissions, and suspensions allowed tanks of this period to grow larger. Aspects of gun technology changed significantly as well, with advances in shell design and aiming technology. During the Cold War, the main battle tank concept arose and became a key component of modern armies. In the 21st century, with the increasing role of asymmetrical warfare and the end of the Cold War, that also contributed to the increase of cost-effective anti-tank rocket-propelled grenades, RPGs, worldwide and its successors, the importance of tanks has waned. Modern tanks seldom operate alone, as they are organized into combined arms units which involve the support of infantry, who may accompany the tanks in infantry fighting vehicles. They are also usually supported by reconnaissance or ground attack aircraft. History Conceptions The tank is the 20th century realization of an ancient concept, that of providing troops with mobile protection and firepower. The internal combustion engine, armor plate, and continuous track were key innovations leading to the invention of the modern tank. 
Many sources imply that Leonardo da Vinci and H.G. Wells in some way foresaw or invented the tank. Leonardo's late 15th century drawings of what some describe as a tank show a man-powered, wheeled vehicle with cannons all around it. However the human crew would not have enough power to move it over larger distance, and usage of animals was problematic in a space so confined. In the 15th century, Janica built armored wagons containing cannons and used them effectively in several battles. The continuous caterpillar track arose from attempts to improve the mobility of wheeled vehicles by spreading their weight, reducing ground pressure, and increasing their traction. Experiments can be traced back as far as the 17th century, and by the late 19th they existed in various recognizable and practical forms in several countries. It is frequently claimed that Richard Lovell Edgeworth created a caterpillar track. It is true that in 1770 he patented a machine, that should carry and lay down its own road, but this was Edgeworth's choice of words. His own account in his autobiography is of a horse-drawn wooden carriage on eight retractable legs, capable of lifting itself over high walls. The description bears no similarity to a caterpillar track. Armored trains appeared in the mid-19th century, and various armored steam and petrol engine vehicles were also proposed. The machines described in Wells' 1903 short story The Land Ironclads are a step closer, insofar as they are armor-plated, have an internal power plant, and are able to cross trenches. Some aspects of the story foresee the tactical use and impact of the tanks that later came into being. However, Wells' vehicles were driven by steam and moved on pedrail wheel, technologies that were already outdated at the time of writing. After seeing British tanks in 1916, Wells denied having invented them, writing, Yet let me state at once that I was not their prime originator. I took up an idea, manipulated it slightly, and handed it on. It is, though, possible that one of the British tank pioneers, Ernest Swinton, was subconsciously or otherwise influenced by Wells' tale. The first combinations of the three principal components of the tank appeared in the decade before World War I. In 1903, Captain Leon René Levavasseur of the French artillery proposed mounting a field gun in an armored box on tracks Major William E. Donahue, of the British Army's Mechanical Transport Committee, suggested fixing a gun and armored shield on a British type of track-driven vehicle. The first armored car was produced in Austria in 1904. However, all were restricted to rails or reasonably passable terrain. It was the development of a practical caterpillar track that provided the necessary independent, all-terrain mobility. In a memorandum of 1908, Antarctic explorer Robert Falcon Scott presented his view that man-hauling to the South Pole was impossible and that motor traction was needed. Snow vehicles did not yet exist however, and so his engineer Reginald Skelton developed the idea of a caterpillar track for snow surfaces. These tracked motors were built by the Wolseley Tool and Motor Car Company in Birmingham, tested in Switzerland and Norway, and can be seen in action in Herbert Ponting's 1911 documentary film of Scott's Antarctic Terra Nova expedition, at minute 50, here. Scott died during the expedition in 1912 but expedition member and biographer Apsla Cherry Garrard credited Scott's motors with the inspiration for the British World War I tanks, writing, Scott never knew their true possibilities, for they were the direct ancestors of the tanks in France. In 1911, a lieutenant engineer in the Austrian army, Gunter Bursten, presented to the Austrian and Prussian War Ministries plans for a light, three-man tank with a gun in a revolving turret. In the same year an Australian civil engineer named Lancelot de Mole submitted a basic design for a tracked, armoured vehicle to the British War Office. In Russia, Vasily I. Mendeleev designed a tracked vehicle containing a large naval gun. All of these ideas were rejected and, by 1914, forgotten, although it was officially acknowledged after the war that de Mole's design was at least the equal to the initial British tanks. Various individuals continued to contemplate the use of tracked vehicles for military applications, but by the outbreak of the war no one in a position of responsibility in any army gave much thought to tanks. World War I Great Britain The direct military impact of the tank can be debated but its effect on the Germans was immense, it caused bewilderment, terror and concern in equal measure. 
it was also a huge boost to the civilians at home. After facing the Zeppelins, at last Britain had a wonder weapon. Tanks were taken on tours and treated almost like film stars. David Willey, curator at Bovington Tank Museum From late 1914 a small number of middle-ranking British Army officers tried to persuade the War Office and the government to consider the creation of armoured vehicles. Amongst their suggestions was the use of Caterpillar tractors, but although the Army used many such vehicles for towing heavy guns, it could not be persuaded that they could be adapted as armoured vehicles. The consequence was that early tank development in Great Britain was carried out by the Royal Navy. As the result of an approach by Royal Naval Air Service officers who had been operating armoured cars on the Western Front, the First Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill formed the Land Ships Committee, on February 20, 1915. The Director of Naval Construction for the Royal Navy, Eustace Tennyson Dean Court, was appointed to head the committee in view of his experience with the engineering methods it was felt might be required, the two other members were naval officers, and a number of industrialists were engaged as consultants. So many played a part in its long and complicated development that it is not possible to name any individual as the sole inventor of the tank. However leading roles were played by Major Walter Gordon Wilson who designed the gearbox and developed practical tracks and by William Tritton whose agricultural machinery company, William Foster & Co. in Lincoln, Lincolnshire, England built the prototypes. On July 22, 1915, a commission was placed to design a machine that could cross a trench four feet wide. Secrecy surrounded the project with the designers locking themselves in a room at the White Hart Hotel in Lincoln. The committee's first design, Little Willie, ran for the first time in September 1915 and served to develop the form of the track but an improved design, better able to cross trenches, swiftly followed and in January 1916 the prototype, nicknamed Mother, was adopted as the design for future tanks. The first order for tanks was placed on February 12, 1916, and a second on April 21. Foster's built 37 all-male, and Metropolitan Carriage, Wagon and Finance Company, of Birmingham, 113, 38 male and 75 female, a total of 150. Production models of male tanks, armed with naval cannon and machine guns, and females, carrying only machine guns, would go on to fight in history's first tank action at the Somme in September 1916. Great Britain produced about 2,600 tanks of various types during the war. The first tank to engage in battle was designated D-1, a British Mark I male, during the Battle of Fleurs Corselet, part of the wider Somme Offensive, on September 15, 1916. Bert Cheney, a 19-year-old signaller with the 7th London Territorial Battalion, reported that three huge mechanical monsters such as had never seen before rumbled their way onto the battlefield, frightening the Jerrys out of their wits and making them scuttle like frightened rabbits. When the news of the first use of the tanks emerged, Prime Minister David Lloyd George commented, It is really to Mr. Winston Churchill that the credit is due more than to anyone else. He took up with enthusiasm the idea of making them a long time ago, and he met with many difficulties. He converted me, and at the Ministry of Munitions he went ahead and made them. The Admiralty experts were invaluable, and gave the greatest possible assistance. They are, of course, experts in the matter of armor plating. Major Stern, a businessman at the Ministry of Munitions had charge of the work of getting them built, and he did the task very well. C.O.L. Swinton and others also did valuable work. David Lloyd George September 19, 1916 France Whilst several experimental machines were investigated in France, it was a colonel of artillery, J.B.E. Estienne, who directly approached the commander-in-chief with detailed plans for a tank on Caterpillar tracks, in late 1915. The result was two largely unsatisfactory types of tank, 400 each of the Schneider and St. Chamond, both based on the whole tractor. The following year, the French pioneered the use of a full 360 degrees rotation turret in a tank for the first time, with the creation of the Renault FT light tank, with the turret containing the tank's main armament. In addition to the traversable turret, 
another innovative feature of the FT was its engine located at the rear. This pattern, with the gun located in a mounted turret and the engine at the back, has become the standard for most succeeding tanks across the world even to this day. The FT was the most numerous tank of the war, over 3,000 were made by late 1918. Germany Germany fielded very few tanks during World War I, and started development only after encountering British tanks on the Somme. The A7V, the only type made, was introduced in March 1918. With just 20 being produced during the war. The first tank versus tank action took place on April 24, 1918 at the Second Battle of villers bretonneux France, when three British Mark IVs met three German A7VS. Captured British MK IVs formed the bulk of Germany's tank forces during World War I, about 35 were in service at any one time. Plans to expand the tank program were underway when the war ended. Other Nations the United States Tank Corps used tanks supplied by France and Great Britain during World War I. Production of American-built tanks had just begun when the war came to an end. Italy also manufactured two Fiat 2000s towards the end of the war, too late to see service. Russia independently built and trialed two prototypes early in the war, the Tract, two man Vezdekode and the huge Lebedenko, but neither went into production. A tracked self-propelled gun was also designed but not produced. Although tank tactics developed rapidly during the war, piecemeal deployments, mechanical problems and poor mobility limited the military significance of the tank in World War I, and the tank did not fulfill its promise of rendering trench warfare obsolete. Nonetheless, it was clear to military thinkers on both sides that tanks in some way could have a significant role in future conflicts. Interwar Period in the interwar period tanks underwent further mechanical development. In terms of tactics, J.F.C. Fuller's doctrine of spearhead attacks with massed tank formations was the basis for work by Heinz Guderian in Germany, Percy Hobart in Britain, Adna R. Chaffee, Jr., in the U.S., Charles de Gaulle in France, and Mikhail Tukhakevsky in the USSR. Liddell Hart held a more moderate view that all arms cavalry, infantry and artillery should be mechanized and work together. The British formed the All Arms Experimental Mechanized Force to test the use of tanks with supporting forces. In the Second World War only Germany would initially put the theory into practice on a large scale, and it was their superior tactics and French blunders, not superior weapons, that made the Blitzkrieg so successful in May 1940. For information regarding tank development in this period, see tank development between the wars. Germany, Italy and the Soviet Union all experimented heavily with tank warfare during their clandestine and volunteer involvement in the Spanish Civil War, which saw some of the earliest examples of successful mechanist combined arms such as when Republican troops, equipped with Soviet-supplied tanks and supported by aircraft, eventually rooted Italian troops fighting for the Nationalists in the Seven-Day Battle of Guadalajara in 1937. However, of the nearly 700 tanks deployed during this conflict, only about 64 tanks representing the Franco faction and 331 from the Republican side were equipped with cannon, and of those 64 nearly all were World War I vintage Renault FT tanks while the 331 Soviet-supplied machines had 45mm main guns and were of 1930s manufacture. The balance of nationalist tanks were machine gun armed. The primary lesson learned from this war was that machine gun armed tanks had to be equipped with cannon, with the associated armor inherent to modern tanks. The five-month-long war between the Soviet Union and the Japanese 6th Army at Kalkin Gol, Nomonan, in 1939 brought home some lessons. In this conflict, the Soviets fielded over 2,000 tanks, to the around 73 cannon-armed tanks deployed by the Japanese, the major difference being that Japanese armor were equipped with diesel engines as opposed to the Russian tanks equipped with petrol engines. After General Georgi Zhukov inflicted a defeat on the Japanese 6th Army with his massed combined tank and air attack, the Soviets learned a lesson on the use of gasoline engines, and quickly incorporated those newly found experiences into their new T-34 medium tank during World War II. Prior to World War II, the tactics and strategy of deploying tank forces underwent a revolution. 
In August 1939, Soviet General Georgi Zhukov used the combined force of tanks and air power at Nomonan against the Japanese 6th Army, Heinz Guderian, a tactical theoretician who was heavily involved in the formation of the first independent German tank force, said where tanks are, the front is, and this concept became a reality in World War II. Guderian's armored warfare ideas, combined with Germany's existing doctrines of Bewegungskrieg, maneuver warfare, and infiltration tactics from World War I, became the basis of Blitzkrieg in the opening stages of World War II. World War II During World War II, the first conflict in which armored vehicles were critical to battlefield success, the tank and related tactics developed rapidly. Armored forces proved capable of tactical victory in an unprecedentedly short amount of time, yet new anti-tank weaponry showed that the tank was not invulnerable. During the invasion of Poland, tanks performed in a more traditional role in close cooperation with infantry units, but in the Battle of France deep independent armored penetrations were executed by the Germans, a technique later called Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg used innovative combined arms tactics and radios in all of the tanks to provide a level of tactical flexibility and power that surpassed that of the Allied armor. The French army, with tanks equal or superior to the German tanks in both quality and quantity, employed a linear defensive strategy in which the armored cavalry units were made subservient to the needs of the infantry armies to cover their entrenchment in Belgium. In addition, they lacked radios in many of their tanks and headquarters, which limited their ability to respond to German attacks. In accordance with Blitzkrieg methods, German tanks bypassed enemy strongpoints and could radio for close air support to destroy them or leave them to the infantry. A related development, motorized infantry, allowed some of the troops to keep up with the tanks and create highly mobile combined arms forces. The defeat of a major military power within weeks shocked the rest of the world, spurring tank and anti-tank weapon development. The North African campaign also provided an important battleground for tanks, as the flat, Desolate terrain with relatively few obstacles or urban environments was ideal for conducting mobile armored warfare. However, this battlefield also showed the importance of logistics, especially in an armored force, as the principal warring armies, the German Africa Corps and the British Eighth Army, often outpaced their supply trains in repeated attacks and counter-attacks on each other, resulting in complete stalemate. This situation would not be resolved until 1942 when during the Second Battle of El Alamein, the Africa Corps, crippled by disruptions in their supply lines, had 95% of its tanks destroyed and was forced to retreat by a massively reinforced Eighth Army, the first in a series of defeats that would eventually lead to the surrender of the remaining Axis forces in Tunisia. When Germany launched its invasion of the Soviet Union, Operation Barbarossa, the Soviets had a superior tank design, the T-34. A lack of preparations for the Axis surprise attack, mechanical problems, poor training of the crews and incompetent leadership caused the Soviet machines to be surrounded and destroyed in large numbers. However, interference from Adolf Hitler, the geographic scale of the conflict, the dogged resistance of the Soviet combat troops, and the Soviets' massive advantages in manpower and production capability prevented a repeat of the Blitzkrieg of 1940. Despite early successes against the Soviets, the Germans were forced to upgun their Panzer IVs, and to design and build both the larger and more expensive Tiger Heavy Tank in 1942, and the Panther Medium Tank the following year. In doing so, the Wehrmacht denied the infantry and other support arms the production priorities that they needed to remain equal partners with the increasingly sophisticated tanks, in turn violating the principle of combined arms they had pioneered. Soviet developments following the invasion included upgunning the T-34, development of self-propelled anti-tank guns such as the Su-152, and deployment of the IS-2 in the closing stages of the war, with the T-34 being the most produced tank of World War II, totaling up to some 65,000 examples by May 1945. Much like the Soviets, when entering World War II six months later, December 1941, the United States' mass production capacity enabled it to rapidly construct thousands of relatively cheap M4 Sherman medium tanks. A compromise all round, the Sherman was reliable and formed a large part of the Anglo-American ground forces, 
but in a tank versus tank battle was no match for the panther or tiger. Numerical and logistical superiority and the successful use of combined arms allowed the Allies to overrun the German forces during the Battle of Normandy. Upgunned versions with the 76mm gun M1 and the 17-pounder were introduced to improve the M4S firepower, but concerns about protection remained despite the apparent armor deficiencies, a total of some 42,000 Shermans were built and delivered to the Allied nations using it during the war years, a total second only to the T-34. Tank hulls were modified to produce flame tanks, mobile rocket artillery, and combat engineering vehicles for tasks including mine clearing and bridging. Specialized self-propelled guns, most of which could double as tank destroyers, were also both developed by the Germans with their Sturmgeschutz, Panzerjager, and Jagd Panzer vehicles and the same Akodinea Ustinovka families of AFVs for the Soviets, such turretless, Casemate-style tank destroyers and assault guns were less complex, stripped-down tanks carrying heavy guns, solely firing forward. The firepower and low cost of these vehicles made them attractive but as manufacturing techniques improved and larger turret rings made larger tank guns feasible, the gun turret was recognized as the most effective mounting for the main gun to allow movement in a different direction from firing, enhancing tactical flexibility. Cold War during the Cold War, tension between the Warsaw Pact countries and North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO, countries created an arms race that ensured that tank development proceeded largely as it had during World War II. The essence of tank designs during the Cold War had been hammered out in the closing stages of World War II. Large turrets, capable suspension systems, greatly improved engines, sloped armor, and large caliber, 90 mm and larger guns were standard. Tank design during the Cold War built on this foundation and included improvements to fire control, gyroscopic gun stabilization, communications, primarily radio, and crew comfort and saw the introduction of laser range finders and infrared night vision equipment. Armor technology progressed in an ongoing race against improvements in anti-tank weapons, especially anti-tank guided missiles like the TOW. Medium tanks of World War II evolved into the main battle tank, MBT, of the Cold War and took over the majority of tank roles on the battlefield. This gradual transition occurred in the 1950s and 1960s due to anti-tank guided missiles, SABO ammunition, and high-explosive anti-tank warheads. World War II had shown that the speed of a light tank was no substitute for armor and firepower and medium tanks were vulnerable to newer weapon technology, rendering them obsolete. In a trend started in World War II, economies of scale led to serial production of progressively upgraded models of all major tanks during the Cold War. For the same reason many upgraded post-World War II tanks and their derivatives, for example, the T-55 and T-72, remain in active service around the world, and even an obsolete tank may be the most formidable weapon on battlefields in many parts of the world. Among the tanks of the 1950s were the British Centurion and Soviet T-54-55 in service from 1946, and the US M-48 from 1951. These three vehicles formed the bulk of the armored forces of NATO and the Warsaw Pact throughout much of the Cold War. Lessons learned from tanks such as the Leopard 1, M-48 Patton series, Chieftain, and T-72 led to the contemporary Leopard 2, M-1 Abrams, Challenger 2. C-1 Ariat, T-90 and Merkava 4. Tanks and anti-tank weapons of the Cold War era saw action in a number of proxy wars like the Korean War, Vietnam War, Indo-Pakistani War of 1971, Soviet War in Afghanistan and Arab-Israeli conflicts, culminating with the Yom Kippur War. The T-55, for example, has seen action in no fewer than 32 conflicts. In these wars the US or NATO countries and the Soviet Union or China consistently backed opposing forces. Proxy wars were studied by Western and Soviet military analysts and provided a contribution to the Cold War tank development process. 21st Century The role of tank versus tank combat is becoming diminished. Tanks work in concert with infantry in urban warfare by deploying them ahead of the platoon. When engaging enemy infantry, Tanks can provide covering fire on the battlefield. Conversely, 
Tanks can spearhead attacks when infantry are deployed in personnel carriers. Tanks were used to spearhead the initial U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003. As of 2005, there were 1,100 M1 Abrams used by the United States Army in the course of the Iraq War, and they have proven to have an unexpectedly high level of vulnerability to roadside bombs. A relatively new type of remotely detonated mine, the explosively formed penetrator has been used with some success against American armored vehicles, particularly the Bradley fighting vehicle. However, with upgrades to their armor in the rear, M1S have proven invaluable in fighting insurgents in urban combat, particularly at the Battle of Fallujah, where the U.S. Marines brought in two extra brigades. Britain deployed its Challenger 2 tanks to support its operations in southern Iraq. Israeli Merkava tanks contain features that enable them to support infantry in low-intensity conflicts, LIC, and counter-terrorism operations. Such features are the rear door and rear corridor, enabling the tank to carry infantry and embark safely, the IMIAPAMMPT multi-purpose ammunition round, advanced C4IS systems and recently, trophy active protection system which protects the tank from shoulder-launched anti-tank weapons. During the Second Intifada further modifications were made, designated as Merkava MK3D Baslik. Research and Development In terms of firepower, the focus of 2010's era R&D is on increased detection capabilities such as thermal imagers, automated fire control systems for the guns and increased muzzle energy from the gun to improve range, accuracy and armor penetration. The most mature future gun technology is the electrothermal chemical gun. The XM291 electrothermal chemical tank gun has gone through successful multiple firing sequences on a modified M8 armored gun system chassis. To improve tank protection, one field of research involves making the tank invisible to radar by adapting stealth technologies originally designed for aircraft. Improvements to camouflage or in attempts to render it invisible through active camouflage which changes according to where the tank is located, are being pursued. Research is. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.